I visited my 87 year old aunt who lives in Colorado Springs. She has this old Royal Model 10 typewriter that her and my uncle have had since the early 1960s. She used to write letters with it and she hasn't been writing letters with this in a while and when I visited her I took a look at the typewriter and it needed a ribbon which I didn't have on me and it needed some other work and so I took it with me down here back home to work on it. So I'm still working on it. Wait, what was that sound? Oh, I think the mailman just got here. Let's check the mail. Hey, it's a package from JJ Short. Could it be? Could it be? I was wondering what I was going to be doing today. Now I know. Let's go get the Royal 10, Aunt Pat's Royal 10, fixed up. All right, let's see what we got here. Packing slip. Right. So we have feed rollers in the original plastic baggie that I sent them in with a little note. Ah, looky here. A nice rubber, fresh rubber platen. Ah, smells like fresh rubber. Hmm. Okay, let's go get the typewriter and put this in. Okay, here is the machine. Okay, going to have to pull out this platen rod. Okay, so you have to loosen the two set screws on the left platen knob sufficiently. And the platen knob pulls out along with this little shaft. That's part of the uh, line spacing clutch. Then on the right side there is this little screw, set screw, that goes into the shaft. We want to take that off and, of course, not lose it. And we should be able to pull this shaft out to the right, like that. Okay, feed rollers. I'm going to take the paper pan off. There's two pan head screws that hold the paper pan in place. And the pan pulls off a little bit like that underneath the rear paper table. Now there is this shaft that pulls out. It just sits in these U-shaped brackets and the feed rollers go onto that shaft. Now if you did it right, you would have taken a picture of how the feed rollers go back in, the order in which they go in, with your phone or something like that, which I did, luckily. So I'd like to uh, clean up this rod a little bit with some alcohol before I put these rollers back on. Okay, so I'm going to take one of these nuts off. This side looks like it comes off easier. The two skinny rollers, there's a short one and a long one. The short one goes on the left side because the bracket for it is off-centered toward the left a little bit between the left and the right bracket. Okay, one of the fat ones, we have the long skinny one next. And then we have the short fat one, the short skinny one, I only one of the big ones on the left. Like that. Put the nut back on the end of the shaft. Okay, the way this goes in is the middle bracket here is just to the left of the center roller. Like that. Okay, let's see if we can put this back in place goes underneath there. Line up the screw holes. Put these screws back in without dropping them. Helps to have a magnetic tip screwdriver. Okay, so the shaft for the platen roller. Just going to do a little clean up with some alcohol. This end goes to the left into this left hand bracket and the secret to getting the shaft in is to push down on this bracket to get the hole centered with a hole in the left bracket here okay okay now there is a flat spot on the shaft here on the right side you can see the mark that the set screw made 
Okay. Okay, now on the left side, you'll see the end of the shaft has two flats, one here and one here, and those should correspond to the two set screws on the inner collar. Of course, the shaft here goes inside the rod. Okay. Okay, so I have a ratcheting, and then I push the button, and it disengages the ratcheting. So that means my clutch is working properly. Let's check out the line spacing. Okay, single, double, triple. So the brackets for the paper bale are already still on the, the bale itself. They have a cylinder, there's a little recessed part in the middle, and then there's this little spring clip that runs through it. So we're going to go ahead and take the screw off on one side here. Okay, take the screw off on one side, and now you can carefully pull off each of these hubs, I guess you call it. So what I want to do is I want to pull off one of the sides in this clip so I can push the roller on, and then I have to reattach the clip in front of the camera. I just got to push this clip back so it clicks. So, okay, the clip is on there and there. Let's do the other one. Okay, disconnect the clip on one end, put the roller in, and then try to re-clip it into the hub. All right, that's on, and that's on. So the roller goes on so that the spring clip is along the flat side, which is the front side of the roller where the scale markings are, like that. All right, they feel nice. Brand new rubber roller, okay. Well, let's see what happens here. This is fairly thin paper. This is that Vagasse recycled sugar cane paper from Staples. Well, okay, I was doing some test typing and I noticed the upper case, the one quarter and three quarter ampersand and the top of the right parentheses are all cut off. And then I did some more testing and noticed that if I use the red or the bottom half of the ribbon, it doesn't do it, but using the top half of the ribbon or the so-called black setting, it does do it. So I think the ribbon lift is not lifting the ribbon quite high enough. And this doesn't really relate to the platen replacement. It's just another a particular adjustment that needed to be done. So I'm referring to this book, Nine Chapters on Typewriter Repair, by compiled and edited by Lee Creighton. He had sent me this a year or two ago, and I didn't really review the book, but it's basically a reprint of some old classic typewriter repair literature. I think a lot of this stuff you can actually get on Richard Polt's website. But anyways, referring to the Royal Ribbon System, in this diagram here, there is this ribbon throw adjusting screw and locking nut back here on the rear of the machine. Which, looking down through the right side of the platen, I took off the right rear panel underneath the right side of the carriage, Looking down in here, this is the adjusting screw and the locking nut. Unfortunately, though I can see it from up here, I don't really have any room to put a wrench in or turn a wrench. So I'm going to have to hit it from the bottom. So looking from the bottom of this machine, right in the middle of all these uh, type linkages, if I type a character, you can see right there the locking nut and set screw. So I went ahead and used one of my little small open-end wrenches, loosened up that locking nut, and adjusted that small set screw to get the ribbon throw just a little bit higher. And now it is printing these uppercase characters just fine. This is the panel on the right side of the carriage that I had to take off in order to just look down in there to see where that adjustment was. It's held on by three screws.
Well, a few years ago when my Aunt Pat asked me to take a look at her typewriter, I drove up to Colorado Springs, brought it back home, did the initial servicing on it. I think I changed the ribbon at that point. I kind of knew uh, in the back of my mind that eventually I'd probably inherit this typewriter since nobody else in the family was really interested in typewriters. I was kind of the logical candidate. So my Aunt Pat passed away early this year in 2021. And in the summer, we went up to Colorado Springs to attend the uh, celebration of her life. And she was laid to rest next to her husband, my Uncle Joe, at the Air Force Academy, which was a beautiful setting. And fortunately, my cousin uh, was able to give this machine to me. And, you know, it's a really cool machine. I, you know, I have the Royal KMM, right? And so it's interesting to see these two machines. They very much represent this evolutionary design from the Royal 10 to the KMM. You can see a lot of similarities mechanically and whatnot. This machine works pretty well. And you know, the rubber parts, having all fresh rubber is just a great thing. Um, again, as you saw earlier, I was able to adjust the ribbon lift throw with that set screw. Kind of hard to get to. you got to go underneath between those linkages and adjust those little set screws, but it was doable. And I, I thanks to uh, Lee Creighton for the uh, service manual that he reprinted. That was great. Well, here it is, Royal 10 Heirloom Typewriter Event Pets. I'm definitely going to be giving this machine a workout alongside the KMM, but this machine is a real looker. You know, the black lacquer smooth paint, the chrome, the glass windows. You know, about the only thing it really needs as far as uh, restoration, I would say, is the replacement decals. But at this point, you know, I might just leave it the way it is. It just kind of is indicative of the kind of life it's had, right? It shows the wear of life, as we all do once we get old enough, like me. Okay, Royal Ten. Aunt Pat's typewriter, my heirloom typewriter in my collection. How about you guys? You know anybody in your family with an old typewriter? Well, maybe if you take care of them, be nice to them, they'll give you that typewriter. <laughs> well, anyways, I hope you guys stay well, stay creative, start writing on your typewriters. If you got a typewriter, write on them. Don't just tinker with them and look at them. Write on them. Okay, guys, until next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.